Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm here to demonstrate my Turtle Mining Well system. You guys have seen me build this in my multiplayer series. I'm in a test world where I can show you exactly how this works. Now I'm going to do this in two stages. First step, I'm going to show you how to use it. And if you don't know anything about programming, or you're not interested in programming, that's fine. You can just download the paste pins and go ahead and use it very easily as long as you follow the following steps. And it'll quickly and easily build an awesome mining well system for you that's going to be extremely fast. Uh, now, if you are interested in the program, programming concepts, stay uh, tuned to the video because after I show you how to use it, I'm going to show you how it works. And that's going to be the part where you guys get to see all the details of, uh, you know, the code and see how the code works and how it functions and all that cool stuff. So without further ado, let me start showing you how to build your own turtle mining fleet with mining wells. All right, the first thing you're going to need is a bunch of mining turtles, and they need to be mining turtles with wireless modems attached. You're also going to need another turtle with a wireless modem and a crescent hammer attached, and that's going to give you a wireless engineering turtle. Those are the first two sets of turtles you need. You're also going to need an energy tesseract. You're going to need two of them, as a matter of fact, for this build. You could use redstone energy cells if you want, I guess, but energy tesseracts are what I'm going with. Uh, set a frequency on it, okay? And I'm just going to name that frequency Demo. And you can set whatever configuration options you want. I'll set it to Redstone Controls Disabled, and this Tesseract is only set to receive energy. You're going to need to pulverize some shiny metal. Shiny metal allows you to, when you right-click on the Tesseract with it, the Tesseract will now remember exactly what settings it had when you pick it up. Like so. Note now that this guy is set up to Direwolf 20, Frequency 1, Receive, and Disabled. Okay. If I uh, don't have shiny metal applied, when I pick it up, it's not going to remember those settings. So those are the two important parts. So let's set up some power, like so. Now there are two sets of turtles you're going to need for this function. First off, you need the wireless engineering turtle, and that needs to be one Y level above all the other turtles. That guy is going to hold the energy tesseract that has all the settings enabled on it, and one redstone energy cell, just like that, or energy conduit. Okay? That's all he needs. The next set of turtles need a few things. They need to have the following. The turtles need to have a inventory ender chest here that has fuel in it. So in this case, I used a white, white, black. The second one needs to be the ender chest that accepts items and goes to your sorting system. So I used white, white, white. Finally, you're going to need a mining well and a redstone energy conduit. These items must be placed in this order. It must be the fuel chest first, then the sorting chest, then the mining well, then the conduit. The following step is to download all the code that you're going to need. The engineering turtle needs to download the following paste bin. And we're going to name that main program. All the mining turtles need to download the following program. And we're going to name that Miner. Sorry, typo, that's the paste bin you need. There you go. Once all three turtles have the paste bin command downloaded, we're going to run the following edit startup. And each miner needs to tell the main computer here what type of turtle it is. So we're going to shell.run on startup the miner program, but part of that program is we're going to specify the type of miner. The turtle just to the left of the engineering turtle should be designated the fuel boss. He's going to be the one who's responsible for fueling the boss. Okay. And then restart the computer and that program will be running. This guy and all other mining turtles need to be designated miners. That's their job. So any turtles you add to this line need to be designated turtles uh, that mine. So miners. Edit startup, shell.run, miner, miner. And that should be all you need to get started. Let's go ahead and run the program real quick just to see what happens. I'm going to have a white, white, white ender chest here that the items are going to go into, and a white, white, black ender chest that holds the coal to fuel all the turtles. Go to your engineering turtle, make sure there's nothing in his way, and we'll run main program. 
Now before we run this main program, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and run the refuel command on the turtle. And we're going to refuel all. Uh, so we're just going to grab ourselves just a little bit of fuel on the engineering turtle. And you can do this on the mining turtles as well. So once all your turtles are refueled, go ahead and run the main program. Note that the turtle here is telling it that fuel boss is turtle ID number two, that's this guy, and miners are turtles number three and four, and the mining wells are running. All the items are going into the turtle's inventory, and the turtle's gonna go ahead and dump all that uh, junk into the ender chest within about 30 seconds or so. Uh, it waits 30 seconds the first time it runs, and then it continuously checks the inventory for more items. Once it's no longer getting any more items, the turtle considers itself complete and moves on to the next step which is to move forward. Now the turtles are also refueling themselves. And you can see this turtle is also fueling the boss because they didn't have enough fuel in them. I only gave them a little bit so that I could show you guys how that function works. So the turtles have now fueled themselves, they've fueled the boss, and they're ready to move on to the next step. That's all you need to do to use the turtle mining program. Simply uh, put the items in the right slot, download the programs as designated, and then run main program. The turtles can all talk to each other, so they figure out who the fuel boss is, they figure out who the miners are. Now, the only other thing I haven't shown you yet is the chunk loaders, and that's just as easy as setting up the miners. You will again need a wireless mining turtle. Place him down, and in the first left slot, you're going to place your fuel chest, and a chest white, white, black, and in the 16th slot, the bottom right, is going to go the chunk loader. We're again going to download the paste bin program for the miners. The same program we used for the miners is used for this, and we're going to name it miner as well. However, on the startup of this program, we're going to shell.run miner chunk loader. Just like that. And restart. This time, when the uh, engineering turtle runs his main program, pretty much the same thing is going to happen. However, you're going to note that turtles 5 and 6 checked in and told them themselves that they are the chunk loader turtles. So this program now knows that turtles 2 is the fuel boss, 3 and 4 are miners, and 5 and 6 are chunk loaders. Cool. So after this iteration runs, it's going to go ahead and talk to the chunk loader turtles and tell them to move forward uh, once the mining is complete. Pretty nifty. And again, it's about a 30 second delay the first time. Uh, this is to give the mining wells enough time to get down if they need to from a height. The fuel boss is running and doing his job. Now the chunk loader turtles are refueling themselves and they're placing the uh, chunk loaders in the sky above. Next time the iteration runs, it's gonna go ahead and uh, break the chunk loader before it moves. So I just ran the program again, and we'll see the chunk loaders break, and then move forward. And here goes. There we go. So let's dive into the code now. So if you're not interested in the code, you can stop watching now. You should know how to use this Turtle Mining Well program with a minimal amount of programming. All you have to do is create that startup program. All right, let's take a look at the miner code first, okay? First off, he opens up the RedNet on the right. So he opens up the RedNet wireless modem, and he creates two program uh, variables. He creates a function variable, and he uh, creates the uh, command line arguments variable. This is the car... Uh, argument that lets the uh, miner program know uh, which it is, if it's a miner or a chunk loader, okay? Several functions here, okay? First off, we've got the place command. That takes uh, slot 16, places it, moves down, takes slot 15, the mining well, places it, and then takes uh, slot 14 and places it below. So that's the ender chest, okay? So that's the function that runs when the miner is placing down the mining wells, okay? Real simple. Remove does the exact opposite. It takes slot 14 and digs below it, picking up the ender chest. Select slot 15, digs in front, picking up the mining well, moves up, select slot 16, and digs forward again, picking up the redstone energy uh, conduit. Okay. The fuel function is pretty easy. Select slot 13, place it above yourself, then select slot 1. Uh, pull out a stack of coal, put back everything in that stack except four, so this is how it uh, chooses that. It gets the current number of items and subtracts four and places them back up. Then it refuels itself, 
select slot 13 again, and digs up to break the ender chest and put it back in its position where it belongs. Now the fuel boss command is only used by the very first turtle, but it's part of every program on every turtle, just in case. Okay, so this is real simple. It does pretty much the same thing. It selects slot 13, gets the items, but instead of, um, you know, refueling itself, it breaks uh, the item on slot 13, moves back up, turns to the right, and faces the fuel boss, selects the coal in slot 1, drops it into the fuel boss's inventory, turns left, and goes back down into his original position. The check fuel function is very simple. It checks if the fuel is less than 400. If it is, it runs the fuel function we saw a moment ago. Now the cycle command is where it does everything in order. It places the item, so the place command we saw a moment ago, that places all the stuff in order. It waits about 25 seconds, and then it checks for uh, the item count in slot one. If there are items there, go ahead and run the cleanup program. Now the cleanup program I hadn't shown you yet, but it's way up here at the top. It just goes through all 12 inventory slots, selects them, and drops them into the ender chest that was placed below during the place function. Once it's done cleaning up, it waits two seconds and then checks for items again. So if there's still items in slot one, it's assuming that the mining well is still running, so it runs the cleanup again and sleeps for another two seconds. And it keeps doing that every two seconds until there are no items in slot one. Once that occurs, then we're done. So we can go ahead and run the remove program, which cleans up all the items. And then it checks the fuel. If the fuel is below 400, it runs the fuel program. If it's done fueling, it just does turtle.forward. So the program moves the turtle forward, okay? Now here's an important function, check-in from ID. All right, what happens is uh, this turtle, which we'll see in a moment, sends a message to all the turtles nearby saying, hey, what kind of turtle are you? This guy, the check-in function, responds to the ID that, you know, the message came from with the command like argument that we supplied. So remember when we run the program uh, on startup called miner and fuel boss? Uh, the turtle that's the fuel boss will reply with fuel boss because that's the first command line argument. When we run startup with just minor, so let's take a look at this other turtle. This is your first command line argument, the word minor. This is the first command line argument, the word chunk loader. So whatever that command line argument is the message that's replied to the master turtle who's asking. So it comes back and says, hey, I'm a miner. This one replies back and says, I'm the fuel boss. And this one replies back and says, I'm a chunk loader. Okay, so that's the check-in command. And I'll show you uh, the message that that is uh, in a bit. The chunk load command is real easy. It is selecting slot 16. It breaks up, so it moves the uh, thing right there, the chunk loader. It checks the fuel level. And then it selects slot 16 again, moves forward, and places it up. So real simple right there. That's how the chunk load command works. And here's the main program. It sits there and waits for a red net message. And as soon as it receives a red net message, it goes ahead and takes whatever that message is. And these commands are pretty tricky. I had a lot of Googling to figure out these guys. It puts into that function variable uh, the following. Load string will create... Uh, a, a command line based on the message it receives. So whatever message it gets, um, it can go ahead and load that into a string. And then down here, the set environment thing, not entirely sure how this works, but basically it makes this work. It allows you to call uh, whatever message as a function. So if it sends the message check-in, it calls the check-in function. If it calls the place function or the cycle function, it goes ahead and runs that function. So whatever message it gets is the name of the function that's being called. So it might get a message saying chunk load. And when it gets that message, it'll run the chunk load program, okay, the function there. All right, and when it's done doing that, it's going to send the red net message of done. So that's all there is to the minor program. Really, uh, I don't know if I want to say simple, but not too crazy. All right, now let's check out the main program on the engineering turtle. This one's a little bit more in depth because it creates several arrays. Number one, the miners. Number two, the loaders. And number three, the fuel bosses. And it also accepts command line arguments. And over here, you can see it opens up on the right, the red net. Um, so there you go. The find turtles program is the program that goes ahead and finds all the turtles nearby. Okay, what it does is it creates a temporary variable called got message. That's true if it received a message. Okay, 
the um, local ID message and distance is the uh, message. So it broadcasts a message on Rednet called check-in. What this does is it sends a message to every turtle nearby. It just says every turtle that's in the range, which is like 250 blocks, run the check-in function. Okay, And if those turtles have the minor program installed on them and it's running, they'll respond because there is a program called check-in. It's the function inside minor. So if we go down here, we'll see the check-in program is the one I showed you a moment ago. That just returns whichever computer you sent from, whether I'm a miner or a chunk loader or a fuel boss. Okay, And then once it's got the message, it's real easy. Okay, um, It runs that red net receive command, so it's sitting there waiting for the message to come back after it broadcasts. If the message comes back as a miner, then it's going to go ahead and put that in the array called miners. And it's going to take the array size, so it starts out at zero and it adds one. So miners bracket one is the ID of the computer that responded. Okay. And then the second time a miner comes in, it'll be a size of one. It adds one to it and it'll say miners Bracket 2 is that ID. So it has all the miners in a big array. Otherwise, if it's a chunk loader message that comes back, then it prints out the chunk loader and it adds it to the loader's array. Finally, the fuel boss message adds it to the fuel boss's array, but it also adds it to the miner's array. Because remember, this guy, even though he's a fuel boss, is also a miner. If the message is done, don't do anything. Um, otherwise, uh, go ahead and print done and your got message is false. So if it doesn't get a message after a few seconds, it goes ahead and just gives up, and it says, all right, I'm done. Cool. Uh, now, if uh, the check fuel level is pretty easy, it checks if the fuel level is below 900, so it's a little bit more fuel that it stores. If it is, then it sends a message to the fuel bosses, bracket one. So there's only one fuel boss, so I don't have to loop through it. And it just sends the command fuel boss, which runs the function fuel boss. So remember, every time it sends a message to these guys, that's the function it's running. Uh, it just sits there on rednet.receive, so it waits for a message to come back. Remember, every time they execute a function, these guys, okay, every time they execute the function, they respond with the word done. So it's sitting there waiting to get that message done after it runs the fuel boss command, which is up here somewhere. Easy enough. Next up, we've got the place function, real easy. That's just going to go ahead and select one, place down the tesseract, move down, select two, place down the redstone energy cell, and uh, then it's going to uh, attack the redstone energy cell, which changes it from blue to orange, meaning energy can flow out of it. And remove does the opposite. It selects slot two, digs it up, selects slot one, digs it up after it moves up. All right, the miners go command, the function here, is real easy. It goes through all the miners array. So remember we built a big array of all the computer IDs that represent the miners. Okay, So in this case it was computer ID 2, 3, and 4. It goes through all of those and it sends the message cycle to that ID number. So rednet send the ID number. So remember the array was miners bracket 1 is ID 2, miners bracket 2 was ID 3. So all the miners are stored in that array. So for each of the IDs it tells it to cycle. Then, after it's told all these guys to cycle, it runs the place command to place down the tesseract and the redstone energy cell. It creates a variable called total, and this is the total number of miners that have responded. And while the total number of miners that have responded is less than the total number of miners overall, it's going to sit there and wait for a red net message. Once it gets a red net message, it adds one to the total. So after one miner checks in, total is one. There's a total of three miners. After the second miner checks in, the total becomes two. And after the third miner checks in, the total becomes three. Total is no longer less than miners, it's equal to it, so we're done with this loop. Then it runs the remove program, which removes the tesseract and the energy conduit. Not bad. Move loaders is pretty much the same thing. For all the computers listed in the loaders array, send the message chunk load. And then you can red net receive, wait for them to come back and respond, and sleep for about half a second. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and send it to the next one. So it'll say, hey you, chunk load, wait half a second after you receive the message done. And then go over to this guy and say, hey you, run the chunk load. And then you're done. And here's the main program. Okay, Find turtles. So the first thing it does is it finds all the turtles out there. 
and then it checks for the command line arguments. If I didn't supply a command line argument, it's going to set the command line argument to the number one, meaning, hey, you didn't tell me how many times to run, so I'm only going to run once. Uh, however, if I do supply a command line argument, it'll run through in a loop that number of times. So if I say, you know, main program 10, it'll run through 10 iterations, and each time it'll print the current iteration. It'll send the miners go command, telling these guys to all move. Then it's going to move itself forward, check for fuel, and then tell the chunk loaders to move. Cool. And that's pretty much all we need to worry about. So that's the code for the chunk loaders and for the engineering turtle. It's really nifty, but not terribly complex. So like I said, if I run my program 10, here we go. That turtle wasn't running, by the way, so that's why he didn't do anything. But you can see it says iteration 1 of 10. It's going to run through, and then it's going to just continuously loop. And with that, guys, I think I can wrap up explaining how the turtle program works. So the first half of this video was how to just use it if you want to use it, and the second half of the video was, um, you know, how it works and the in-depth explanation of the code. Not too shabby. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.